All right, so if you've noticed, U.S. stock indices have started to decrease in average daily range. The top chart, I have the S&P 500 E-mini futures, uh, symbol ES, and at the bottom, I have the average daily range indicator, which measures the average point range uh, for the day. And as we can see right now, it's sitting at 57, and it's you know decreased more than half uh, from previous highs. So what this means is that you know most stock indices are starting to consolidate. If we look at S&P the past week, maybe two weeks, we can see it hasn't moved as much. It hasn't really broken. I guess it's, it's made new highs, but uh, it's kind of staying between a range and thus harder to trade. So in today's video, we're actually going to be building a strategy using the Camarilla Privets uh, indicator. Uh, on the chart here, you see S1, S2, S3, all the way down to S4, horizontal lines, and then R1, R2, R3. And there's actually an R4 as well, but it's, it's off the chart. Um, so I've been wanting to build a pivot system for a while because pivots allow you to build counter trend systems. And when the range of, a, of an instrument is starting to decrease, you tend to find more success with counter trend systems, basically where you're going against the trend, more of a contrarian approach to your automated trading systems. And I think pivots are a great way to do that. So Camarilla pivots, I won't really bore you on how they work, but essentially they use previous daily or intraday data. Uh, to define those pivots. Usually they're lows uh, from the previous day, but you can configure it to be the previous week or previous month. Um, in my example, we'll be using uh, daily data. So it'll be using those previous lows and then uh, adding uh, you know, distance between the, the, the other points. So by default, it has four points for resistance, which are you know, re either previous highs or previous closes that were up, and then uh, four pivots for support, the S, uh, which is, uh, you know, previous lows or previous closes that were, were lower. So what I did was I added Camarilla pivots into StratGen. Um, StratGen is an app on NinjaTrader that allows you to build strategies, automated trading strategies without writing any code. And um, I ran a back test with all the Camarilla pivots ranges. So you can see here in the parameters column, you know, we tried R1, R2, R3, S1. All that sort of stuff for long and short. And I found uh, through my testing, if you want to learn more about how to use StratGen or how to test in and out of sample strategies, definitely check out my previous videos or the links below. But I didn't want to bore you guys with the actual process of building the strategy. I wanted to show you just the final result, which I'll be sharing with you. So final result, here's the source code. Um, I tested probably about 300 different iterations, basically only using the Camarilla pivot. So it, it could only enter if uh, we crossed above or below one of those pivot points. And then I tested a range of profit targets and stop losses, um, minimum 100 ticks, maximum 500 ticks. And uh, the final, uh, after all my testing, which took about probably half an hour, um, let me just pull up the source code. You guys can use this strategy as well. NQ pivots, that's what I called it. If I can find it, NQ pivots, there it is. So this is tested from 2022 to today. So multiple different market regimes in that. Um, so for the long side, it's going to be entering if we cross above the S1. So the first support, it's going to be entering long. And then for the short, we're actually going to be shorting if we cross below the R3 pivots. There's our enter short code here. This is in the, the NinjaTrader platform and StratGen generated all this code for us automatically. So I didn't have to write it because it saves me a lot of time, right? Uh, we have a 200 tick profit target, uh, which is uh, 200 ticks, $5 per tick, $1,000 and a 400 tick stop loss. So $2,000 stop loss. So the profit target is smaller than the stop loss, which is okay. I know some of you uh, may have heard that, oh, you always need a higher profit target than a stop loss. Depends on the strategy, right? As long as your strategy has um, a good return to drawdown, that's what matters. So there's the final back test for the system, including two ticks of slippage and commissions. Um, this is trading the NQ e-mini contract. 
from 2022 till today on the US equities RTH trading session. So it only trades between normal stock market hours, 930 to four, and we'll actually sell if it's in a position at four. So some good metrics, you know, the net profit is much higher than the max drawdown. I'm looking for a greater than two. So the max drawdown is 18,000, the, the net profit is 112,000. You could also trade this on micro futures as well, which would essentially divide the numbers by 10. That's the main metric that I care about. Another good metric to look at is the average trade. So on average, it's making $92 per trade. Um, I like to see, you know, above 20 to $30. So 90 is great. And of course it makes money in the long and short side. Obviously you, you do notice the short side profit is much lower than the long side. Let's be honest. It's hard to make money short on NQ on NASDAQ futures. Uh, it's very hard to be consistent. So to have any gains on short is I'm happy with. But uh, here we can see some of the entries, kind of how it trades, and it's very counter trendy. So it's usually a contrarian approach. It's going against the grain. So I'll explain this trade here. Like we get a gap up at NQ at 9:30 a.m. Eastern. So as soon as the market opens, we get a gap up, right? Most trend following systems will be going long, right? A trend system would be going long around this point, and you know NQ pivots is going short. Now it had a for this day specifically, not the best entry. I mean, it, it seemed to enter on the low of the day, but eventually was successful. And then it actually shorted again. Once it hit that pivot again, we crossed below it and actually hit two profit targets in a row. Um, we'll do some long trades. The long I find is not as contrarian because it's buying on the first support, which is the closest to the pivot. So you will see like, the, these buys here, they do seem kind of at the, the top of the day and you feel like you're entering late. It's a little bit more trendy on the long side than the short side. And what that tells us is that usually the trend is your friend on the long side in NQ, but you want to take a contrarian approach to shorting. Now it depends where the pivots land. Obviously here the S1 pivot is much lower, right? So this buy does seem more contrarian on a macro view. You can see obviously NQ is down, you know, two, 300 points here and you're buying, but in the day, it seems more of a trend following. It seems to be buying at the, the top. So what I really like is on, on choppy days, it can really perform well. If we see this day here on October 11th, you know, it's able to buy these dips, buy three dips in a row and then short the top where you get the range market. These pivots do very, very well. The key is you got to have somewhat of a sort uh, a tight profit target and stop loss. You can't just be holding till the end of the day on um, counter trend strategies because when you're going against the trend, it's only usually for a short period of time. Of course, it doesn't always work out, and we can see that you know strategy has some losses, but overall it's net profitable and it's good to see. So I implore you guys to maybe use Camarilla pivots to build your next counter trend strategy and succeed in this. Uh, more of a choppy market, consolidated market during elections where the average day range seems to be decreasing, at least for now. So, um, yeah, that's my strategy today. If you want to learn more about algo trading, strat gen, or how to code trading bots, see the links in the description below and let me know in the comments below if your next strategy is going to use the camera pivots. I'd love to hear your feedback. Have a good weekend, guys. Bye-bye.